ladies and gentlemen, my name is Austin from awfulmedia.com, and today we're going to pick up where we left off a few days ago on our WordPress theme. Uh, but today, we're going to have some fun. We're going to write a little bit of jQuery uh, to work on our responsive navigation menu. The plan is to uh, make it so whenever the browser gets to a certain resolution, then we'll turn the navigation menu actually into a toggle button. And then whenever that button is clicked, the navigation menu will appear, as will a close menu button. You click the close menu button, the navigation menu goes away, and then the, uh, the toggle navigation button comes back. It doesn't sound too difficult, and it's really not. But the key is a little bit of CSS trickery along with some uh, jQuery toggling and hiding and showing effects. Really simple to do, but it just takes a little bit to set up. So the first thing we have to do is get into the CSS. So we have to, at a specific resolution, hide our navigation menu and show our toggle navigation button. That's easy, right? Yeah. Alright, so to do that, we're going to be using some media queries. And I have done a tutorial over media queries. You can click the link on the screen right, uh, right here. And it will take you to that video. And it will just kind of teach you what media queries do and how to use them in a very, very simplistic way. So the first thing we have to do is figure out the resolution we have to do it at. And uh, thankfully, we're using Skeleton, or any other framework you may be using. So it already has the resolutions kind of set for us. So I'll just go into the Skeleton file in the CSS and look at uh, where it is they, they, have, they are doing their media queries. And I am going to go right here. It's going to be between 480 pixels and 767 pixels. Let me just show you. Let me make sure that's refreshed what I'm talking about. Right there is where we will drop this down into a button that we can click and make it come down as a menu. And that resolution is 480 uh, to 767. So anywhere between there and there it will have that. So what we can do is actually just take this media query and we could actually write our CSS inside of this media query in the skeleton file uh, but to keep things uh, not confusing, I'm going to keep them separate. Pretty much just for the video. I'm going to paste that in right there, and then I'm going to add the closing bracket right there. Now inside of this, I am going to do the styling for that resolution. The first thing I want to do is hide the main nav. So I'm going to make that main nav display to none. If we control S and refresh, you'll see that's completely gone at that resolution. And then what we want to do is make a button appear where that was that you can click on to or tap. I'm guessing you're using a phone or a tablet or something if you're at this uh, small of a screen. So come into the header, add a div with a class of main nav. Now we're using a main nav here so we can keep the same styles as our navigation menu. So we're just uh, taking those styles and applying it to this button. And then this is going to be full width, so I would say uh, make it 16 columns. Again, using skeleton.css. Uh, if you're just tuning in on this video, you may be kind of confused. So check out the last videos to see where we actually are. Then an ID. Now we're giving this one an ID of, let's say, show nav. Nac, nav. And then close the dev. Now inside of this div, we're going to have a link because that's how we styled the main nav links. We have links inside the main nav container. So we're going to add a link in here that that will receive the same styling. And this link is actually just going to be to a hashtag or a hexadecimal symbol or pound sign, what wherever, whatever, whoever. And then I'm going to add a some text inside the anchor tag of toggle navigation. Let's style this in here, say so show nav. It's going to be default to display none because we do not want it to be 
on the other resolutions on a larger screen we don't want to see this so make sure it's always set to none and then we're going to show it in our media query let's so make sure we add the same background color which was 62A351 and now in our media query we're going to set that freaking train I swear it knows when I start recording Austin's recording a video let's turn by his house and blow a horn really loud um, I apologize for the train but I do not have time to sit here and wait on it to go by so show nav is going to display as a block so now we have it hidden here it's not visible but once you get to this resolution we want it to be visible so control s refresh and there it is why is it green I wrote down the wrong color way off what color did how did I get that color gosh what is that and now when you click this you notice nothing happens because we, don't, we haven't told it to do anything but that's looking good though whenever you get down to there it does that so right here it's a navigation menu right there it's a button okay now let's write some jQuery let's go into our header.php and the first thing we have to do is actually tell WordPress hey I know you have jQuery but I need to use jQuery so we don't have to actually include jQuery we just have to tell uh, WordPress that we want to use it on our website because it uses jQuery in the admin panel for like the slide down effects and things like that so it, it's already included we just have to tell it yeah we want to use it out here so we're going to put a PHP tag and we're going to say we're going to use the function WordPress in Q script now what does that mean that means whatever script we call right here WordPress is going to add it to its queue of scripts and that means it's going to actually run through and make sure this script hasn't been called yet it isn't loaded if it's already loaded it will not run it again and the reason they do that is because WordPress has a huge huge resource of plugins developed by all kinds of different people and a lot of them they may not realize maybe we should not bring in our own copy of jQuery but a lot of them do that so you don't want to have uh, 15 uh, copies of jQuery loading but that could happen if uh, your plugin people are stupid so what this is going to do is make sure it's not already loaded before it loads this a lot of the time with some of the uh, people who make plugins and you actually get unlucky enough to find somebody who included their own jQuery you have to actually go through and edit the plugin yourself but I don't really like to use plugins because of that reason there's a lot of unnecessary code a lot of unnecessary stuff that you have to filter through so I just use um, I try to develop my own plugins but inside of these parentheses we're going to say jQuery and it knows what that means it's going to go and find a copy of jQuery and grab the latest version available on your uh, local and they update jQuery with every release of uh, Photoshop Wow of WordPress as long as there was obviously a release of jQuery within that time frame but now we have the ability to write jQuery but another but WordPress uses jQuery in a no conflict mode what does that mean that means WordPress <laughs> tries to make jQuery have no chance of conflicting with any other scripts languages or uh, anything like that it tries to make it where it cannot conflict with any other th any other language so it, it uses uh, no conflict which with jQuery means we have to write out jQuery instead of the dollar sign that you would typically use in writing uh, scripting for jQuery but that's fine it's not that big of a deal and we're, we're writing very little jQuery so it's not really going to be much work we could set it up to where we can use the dollar sign but that's uh, more work than it's worth for this little bit of jQuery you'll notice that I actually brought my HTML my body tag in the closing div for the container into the footer where they are supposed to be now right in here or here I'm going to start writing the jQuery 
we're going to open up with a script tag. Now inside the script tag, we're going to open our first jQuery function. And we're going to say jQuery, again, in place of the dollar sign. And we want a click function. So when you click, Now, if you don't write jQuery or you don't know anything about jQuery, this may be kind of confusing, but it's really simple. Uh, we're just saying, hey, we're using jQuery. And instead of the dollar sign, which is the typical symbol for jQuery scripts, we're using the jQuery word. And inside that, we're going to add our ID of show nav. So this is going to affect the show nav ID. And then it says on click, run this function. Now we're going to say jQuery, again, in place of the dollar sign, and a toggle. Now I'll explain this. We want to affect the class of main nav. And we want it to toggle whenever we click the show nav button. We want it to toggle using a predefined jQuery effect, slow. So it's going to toggle on the screen using the slow effect. That's pretty simple. I hope you can uh, understand that. I'm hoping I'm, I'm explaining it decently. Now, Control S. If we view this, we click that. Isn't that just amazing how easy that was to do? We have no back button yet, but look at that. Toggle navigation. You click that, and it shows the navigation. Obviously, in this, in this example, it is actually just taking up the same amount of space, so it's kind of pointless. But we'll get to that. Now we want to create an exit button or a hide that navigation button. So in the header.php, let's take this, copy that and paste it right there. And I don't know what I want to use here. Maybe just an X, something like that. And give it an ID of close nav or hide nav or whatever you want it to be. Now we're going to say close nav. The default is display none again. Background is going to be the same background, 5CA, 5CC. I want the text to align to the right. That way that my X will be over to the right, the top right of it. Make it more recognizable as a close. And make sure the font family for this is as well sans serif. Now, if we view this in our browser refresh and we toggle this, we're going to get the X popping up because the X has the same class as the... Uh, as the main nav because it's using that styling. We could actually just get rid of that. We don't need that class on there at all. So we can get rid of the main nav. Keep the 16 columns to keep it in the container properly. Toggle and it doesn't come up. Beautiful. Now let's write some jQuery to make this happen. So in our footer, when we click on the show nav, I want the X to pop up with the menu. So we're going to write the same thing, which we can just copy and paste. Again, very, very simple script, but it works really, really well. And we're affecting the close nav ID. And I want it to show using the same effect. Control S, F5, toggle, and there's a little X. Click the X, nothing happens. We want so that whenever we click the X, that the navigation menu goes away. So to achieve that, we're going to write the same thing again. Paste that in. It says whenever you click close nav, I want to toggle that and show it should be hiding the close nav. There we go. I'll get this. I'll get it. Toggle, 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 toggle. Now that's pretty awesome, right? And this is uh, going to work well on mobile devices, at least modern mobile devices. So they're viewing this page. They have the content here. Where's the navigation? They see a button that says toggle navigation. They, they tap on that and it pops up with uh, the navigation menu. Obviously we're going to make these uh, display vertically, but uh, it's going to be pretty awesome, right?